Today, I'm going to show you how to keyword cluster thousands of keywords to avoid cannibalization and duplicate search intent. And this is using AI and SEO and custom GPTs. This is a free keyword clustering tool I've created today. And I'm going to break down how to cluster thousands of SEO keywords on ChatGPT, custom made on the keywords clustering tools that work for me. For example, if you check out these two websites where we actually did keyword research for thousands of keywords, you can see the traffic for both of them is going up. But there's a much easier and faster way that wasn't possible before. And this is based on custom GPTs. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to show you how I'm going to share the free keyword clustering tool with you today. Let's go. What I'm going to show you is my new method for keyword clustering. Because the problem is, right, let's say you've got a ton of keywords and you can find a million. You can literally find a million for any niche. And then you feel it down. You're like, right, I'm going to get easy keywords to rank for. No problem there. Get a ton of keywords at bulk. But the problem is, let's say you're in the birds niche, whatever niche you're in. But the biggest issue here is that not all of them are relevant. A lot of these keywords are going to be overlapping in search intent. Some of them are going to have nothing to do with your actual niche. So, for example, let's say you're in the birds niche, then you don't want to be ranking for a keyword that has your main niche idea in there, but isn't worthy of ranking for. So, for example, two birds on a wire, lyrics. Does that make sense to my website about birds? Absolutely not. So it's like, okay. Well, how do you scale this? How do you make sure that your keywords are not overlapping? And today, what I want to do is create a new strategy that wasn't possible until last week using a new keyword clustering process. Now, you might say, what is keyword clustering? Well, basically, you're grouping similar keywords together. You're organizing your content by the same topic or theme, and you're making sure your content is more targeted and relevant. And then you say, well, what's the benefit of that? Basically, this is going to help you organize your content better. It's going to help you get better rankings because your content is more organized. You're going to be able to understand the search intent and automate it at scale. It's very efficient. So instead of targeting one keyword at a time, you can target a whole group of keywords. And I'll show you that in a second. Plus, you can avoid a lot of confusion. Now, what I'm going to attempt to do is create a custom GPT like you can see right here. It's completely free to use and it's just going to group SEO keywords together. And I'm going to show you how I prompt it to make sure that I get the best outputs I can. I don't know if it's going to work. We'll see. There's only one way to find out. I've used ChatGPT before for keyword clustering, and there's a couple of awesome features inside this custom GPT setup that are going to help us get the most out of keyword clustering. So, for example, when you create your own custom trained ChatGPT, you can give you instructions on exactly what you want from your keyword clustering. And then at the same time, it can do web browsing so it can figure out the search intent. We don't really need image generation, honestly, but what's even more useful is code interpreter, right? So. For example, if someone uploads a list of keywords to cluster so that there's no duplicate search intent, so there's no cannibalization in terms of similar keywords going against each other. And there's just a bunch of cool stuff we can do with this. Now, normally, if you were using a keyword clustering tool, you're going to be charged credits, right? So, for example, if you saw this video where I did keyword clustering using SE ranking, which is a really good tool for keyword clustering, but you can see that you're going to get charged every time you do that. Whereas with ChatGPT, it's completely free, right? So you get access to a free tool that you can use to cluster your keywords and basically automate keyword cluster. So let's build it together. And then I'm going to share it with you at the end of the video. So what we're going to do here is use Dali3. And this is what we do on a Monday morning for fun. We just create new tools for AI SEO. That's my life now. So we'll give it a description. And one of the things that I typically find when you're building these tools is you're kind of like a sculptor, right? And so you're going to give it some instructions. Then you're going to play around with the tool, get a bit of feedback. You start with the raw material. So for example, when you're starting with a custom GPT tool like this, and this is really useful if you want to know how to create your own tools and, and basically create any sort of tool you want using this process, then you start with a raw sort of material like that. You give it a cheeky gander, you see what you can improve, and eventually you end up with something like this where the custom GPT is ready to go. By the way, if you want chat GPT to output like three or four images at once, just ask it to create multiple DALI 3 images. Really useful prompt because normally it just outputs one. So basically what we have to do is go back and forth with ChatGPT, wrestle a little bit, and then we'll narrow it down. So that's what we're going to do today. And the way that I'm going to teach ChatGPT how to create this tool is we've got a list of instructions. So I've told it the goal, what it does, why we're doing this, the benefits, some metaphors on how this works, etc. And let's try plugging that into the custom instructions like so. And here we'll say, help me cluster my keywords. We'll hit say, and let's see what it does. Now, one of the best things about this is that if this isn't set up in the correct way, then you can easily go back and change it. So 
We said, help me cluster my keywords. It said, sure, I'd be happy to help you cluster your keywords, mate. Please provide me with the list of keywords you like to cluster. And I'll group them based on similarity and search intent. Then we're going to copy the keywords from Ahrefs and you can use whatever tool you want. We're pasting them in here, but you, I can already see a couple of issues, right? So this is what we need to change. So for example, in this category right here, you've got two birds on a wire lyrics, and then you've got two birds lyrics. These should be clustered out. They should be removed because they're the same search intent. So they, this is why you need to go back and forth a little bit with it, but I'm doing the testing for you. I'm going to edit this now. So if you want to edit the tool that you've created, just click edit over here. By the way, thank you everyone who's using these tools. We've got 700 people using the free outline generator, 44 using Julian Goldie GPT, 70 people using the top called map maker and 23 people using the keyword extraction tool. That's pretty amazing. Nearly a thousand people already. So I'm going to edit the keyword clustering tool like so, and I'm going to go over to configure and then we can just update the instructions. Now what I'm going to say is if some keywords are remotely similar or the same as search intent, see them as duplicates and only include one, make the filtering harsh and strict it. Now, the reason that I'm showing you this is so that you can not only use this free tool that I'm giving you, but also you can understand how the process works, because if you understand how clustering works and you get a better feel for it, and I'm not like the best keyword cluster in the world by any means, but if you understand the process, then you understand the strategy and you can use the tool in the best way possible. So we're going to test this out again and we'll just take the category that we had a problem with. So we'll paste that in and we don't actually want to use these keywords, but it's a good way to test whether it's actually filtering out duplicate search intent or not. And now I'm going to show you the output, right? So for example, I've pasted back in the subcategories underneath and you can see it's got two keywords with the same duplicate search intent. So two birds on a wire lyrics and two birds on a wire right there. And what it's done is created the keyword cluster song lyrics. And then as you can see, it said, since two birds on a wire and two bird lyrics are likely the same song, these will be considered duplicates and remove them. So basically what it's doing is keyword clustering the keywords, filtering out the duplicate search intent, and then making the list shorter because we don't want overlapping keywords. We'd rather play it safe and have one page that targets multiple keywords because they're all just different variations of the same thing. And that means you can have a much shorter, but better list of keywords. So you might give it 10 different keywords, but actually it's going to remove all the duplicates and then you just get a few page recommendations under each category. So let's go again now. And I've also added this instruction right here, which is when you get the list, ask the keyword what their niche and website is about, because then we can remove any keywords that are relevant to that niche. For example, if you have a website about bird watching, then you don't want content around angry birds or flappy birds or whatever random game it is. So let's copy this in. And as you can see here, when we start it up again, it says, let me know the niche or theme of your website so I can ensure that the keywords are relevant and appropriately grouped. So I'm going to paste my keywords down here and I'll say my website is about bird watching and bird wildlife. And let's see if it works. It might not work. We'll try it. So we've given it the list of keywords and the details on what our website is about. And you can see it's filtering out the irrelevant keywords, right? So for example, angry birds, we're getting rid of that. We don't need that. And the same with painting. So this is really good because it filters out irrelevant stuff. And now it's going to give us a list of relevant keyword clusters based on the content we should produce. And you can see it's clustered it into, for example, types of birds. And then you've got red birds, tropical birds, cute birds, etc. And this should work for any industry, any niche. It's not going to be 100% perfect. If you try it and it's not the best thing in the world, that's expected. What do you expect from a tool that I created in 30 minutes? But it has a lot of potential. I think it will save you a lot of time. It's already filtered out the rubbish that we don't want. And it's much easier to scale our keyword research. I mean, we gave it 50 keywords and it's filtered them down really quickly based on the custom instructions I've given it. And that way you don't need to pay for keyword clustering tools. You don't need to wait a long time for the keyword clustering to be done. It's quite a strict filter. So you're going to save a lot of time. And this is based on what's working for me. And now these would be the category pages. And these will be the blog posts you actually create. So you create a blog post about red birds or tropical birds or green birds, etc. Same with the bird behavior. So bird behavior and facts will be a category. And then you've got the individual pages under each category. And then it's free to use. It saves you a lot of time because you're automating the clustering. You're avoiding cannibalization because it ensures two pages aren't competing for the same keyword. It's a very clear blueprint to use because you're not like, right, I'm going to create a page about this and then this one. It's very, very efficient because then you can target multiple keywords without creating multiple pages and you avoid duplication because each page has a very unique and clear focus, as you can see right here. So that's it. I'm just going to quickly cover some FAQs that we got. So Tim Parker Pro, 
shout out to him. He said, number one, you're setting the bar high for your competitors. So for me, genuinely, I just try and make my free videos better than most paid content out there because I think that's the world we live in. I think all information out there is going to be free in the future. You know, that's the way the world is going. And I love making these videos. So Tim asked, are we able to edit the GPT prompts or do we have to start all over? So if you're creating your own tool, let's say, for example, we make this one public right now, then to edit it, all you do is you go to explore over here and then on whichever tool you want to edit, you can just click edit like that and you can go to configure and then you can just change the details in the custom instructions. Really easy to do. So you don't have to start over again. You can just edit whatever you want to on your own tools. So Mars 69, shout out to Mars, said, I wonder whether in a future update, these custom GPTs can communicate to each other like a real team. So that's a very, very interesting point. What I think is going to come very soon is plugins inside custom GPT. So for example, you create like a ch custom GPT and then you'll be able to link it to Zapier or Canva or multiple apps, kind of like you can with Zapier but inside chat GPT, I think that's the way we're going because then you can create massive workflows. You can automate everything together and then you've got a massive team working together. You can automate everything. There's a huge amount of potential for that, but it's very scary as well. Now on my last keyword clustering video, someone asked, I have SE Ranky and Writer Zen and they both do keyword clustering. Which one is best? So for me, I haven't tried Writer Zen's keyword clustering feature. I do like SE Ranky's, it's really good. And I still think it's a very good option. But if you want to do it for free, then you can use this keyword clustering tool. The outputs might not be as good. You test it yourself and you see, but at least then you've got multiple options. So that's basically it. That is the keyword done. It was too easy. Creating these SaaS tools is too easy on ChatGPT. I don't know if there's going to be a limit to the amount of custom GPTs you can create. There's quite an interesting, on the official community of OpenAI, they actually have this tag custom GPT. And there's a bunch of interesting posts there. So if you want to learn more about creating your own custom GPTs, I haven't looked at this yet, but it does sound quite interesting. So for example, the way that you instruct it, whether you use second or third person in there and the different outputs you can get based on that. You can actually upload files to custom GPTs as well. So for example, you can train it on your own data. I saw that some people are uploading like 1000 articles to a custom GPT, which is insane. That is a lot of data to train it on. So if you want access to this, I'm going to insert it inside my free course in the custom GPTs for SEO section. So it's right here under free AI SEO tools, custom GPTs for SEOs. You can find the link right here. And if you do want to book in a call about how to get more leads, traffic and sales to your website using SEO, then feel free to book in a free SEO strategy session. Link is in the comments. Same for the free course. So basically you'll get a custom tailored link building plan so you can generate more lead sales and profits from your website using SEO. And we'll basically answer any questions that you have. You'll discover the best link building strategies. You'll discover how to outrank your competitors. And that is completely free to book in. So thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you watching. I'm excited to see what we come up with in the future. Bye bye.